Let's play a game of sliding tic-tac-toe. The rules of this game are identical to regular tic-tac-toe, with two key exceptions. First, as you can see here, each player is limited to three of their markers. Second, after all six markers have been placed, if no one is a winner because they've had three in a row, then we will continue playing by allowing each player in turn to move one of their markers into an adjacent square. For example, imagine that X began the game in a corner, O went to the center, X went to the opposite corner, O went to a third corner, X, of course, had to go to the remaining corner. And then O finished the game by placing the last piece there. Because the game has yet to produce a winner, it continues with the players moving the existing pieces over one space to an open square. X begins this process, and perhaps it will move this one over to the left by one. Now it's O's turn, and O, perhaps, will move its center piece over to the left. Following that, X could move this piece up one. And you'll notice here that there is a single legal move for the O's. That would be to take the O in the top right and move it down one. Maybe X follows it up by taking the bottom left X and moving it to the right. And maybe, just maybe, O will commit a massive blunder by moving here, allowing X to move one more to the right on the bottom, and therefore win the game by having three in a row. Resetting the board. Here is your puzzle. You go first. Design a strategy that guarantees you the victory. And while you think about that, Check out some of these cool books that I've written. Normally, I would tell you to think about backward induction, a subject from Chapter 2 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. Here, however, I think that's a trap. It's actually easier to speculate on what you think would be a good first move and follow that through all the way to its completion. Are you ready for the solution? If not, here's a hint. You should go for the obvious. Place the initial X dead center. Are you ready now? It may seem like there is a lot of work left to do, given that there are eight remaining squares for O to move into. But if you think about it, each of those corner squares is functionally identical. And same thing with each of those center edge squares. As a consequence, we really only have two more cases to work through. Let's begin with what happens if we have an O in a corner following your opening move. From here, you can pretty much control everything you need to. If you place an X there, O is obligated to move to the top center. Now you are obligated to move to the top right. And now, even though you don't have another X to place down, if your opponent does not move into the bottom left corner, you will be able to shift the bottom center X on your next turn and win. So they are obligated to go there. Now you can start shifting, and you'll notice that if you begin moving those center two X's over, there's nothing that your opponent can do to stop you from being able to win two turns later by completing three in a row all the way on the right side. And of course, if your opponent moves into a different corner, then you will just rotate all of this explanation accordingly 
and still be able to force a win in a similar manner. The other case to consider is what happens if your opponent begins by placing an O in a center edge slot. Let's think about this one. If you follow it up by placing an X in a corner like that, your opponent is obligated to move up there. You now are obligated to move to the opposite corner up top. And once more, if you think about it, your opponent is forced to move into this left center slot. That's because if they don't, on your next turn, you will be able to move the center X over to the left and win immediately. Of course, even if your opponent goes there, they're just delaying the inevitable. Do you see why? If you move the bottom left X over by one, no matter what your opponent does, you'll be able to move it over one more square afterward and complete three in a row diagonally. Thus, no matter how your opponent plays this out, you are guaranteed to win. Did you figure this one out? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Take care.